There are many different types of beams, ranging from simply supported beams to cantilever beams to fixed beams. But the type of beam has a big influence on the load path and the stability of a structure. Modeling beams wrongly in finite element programs can lead to risky results and, if not double-checked, ultimately to failure of the structure. So the understanding of the different types of beams is essential for a safe structural design. So in this video, we are going to present the most common types of beams used in modern construction projects, how they are supported and look at real world examples. So let's get into it. The first type of beam is the simply supported beam. Simply supported beams are the most used static system. And it's also usually the static system we first see in university. And that's also for a good reason. Calculating the internal and reaction forces of a simply supported beam due to loads is very easy because the static system is statically determinate. In short, this means that all forces can be calculated by hand with the three equilibrium equations. But if you want to learn more in detail what the difference between statically determinate and indeterminate structures is, then click on the link in the video description. The simply supported beam has two supports. A pin support, which has a horizontal and a vertical reaction force, and a roller support, which has a vertical reaction force. But now let's look at an example. The beams of a timber flat roof are often simply supported. In this case, the secondary beams are simply supported by the primary timber beams. We'll also include a link in the video description to a step-by-step -step guide on how to design those simply supported timber beams. The second most used static system is the cantilever beam. There are plenty of cantilever beams in our daily lives, such as balconies, cranes or high-rise buildings. As for the simply supported beam, calculating the internal and reaction forces due to loads is very easy because the static system is statically determinate. This means again that all forces can be calculated by hand with the three equilibrium equations. The cantilever beam has one support, a fixed support which has a horizontal, a vertical reaction and a moment. An example of the cantilever beam is a concrete core of a high-rise building. This concrete core transfers all horizontal wind loads down to the foundation, which is the fixed support of a cantilever. Two-span continuous beams are not as common as simply supported or cantilever beams. This static system is characterized by its three supports, one on the ends and one in between. Calculating the internal and reaction forces can also not be done easily with the equilibrium e equations. Either formulas or FEM programs are used to calculate those forces. Now, the two-span continuous beam has three supports. One pin support and two roller supports. An example of a two-span continuous beam is a rafter of a roof which is supported by three purlins. The three-span continuous beam is characterized by its four supports two on the ends and two in between. Again, due to its statical indeterminacy, calculating the internal and reaction forces cannot be done easily with the equilibrium equations. Either formulas or FEM programs are used to calculate those forces. The three-span continuous beam has four supports, one pin support and three roller supports. The next type of beam is the X-span continuous beam. Now, a beam can have as many continuous supports as required. The X in X-band continuous beam stands for a number. The static system has one pin and X roller supports. And either formulas or FEM programs are used to calculate the forces due to its statical indeterminacy. An example of an X-band continuous beam is a very first approximation of the deck of a cable state bridge, where the cables are modeled as spring supports of the bridge deck. Now note, please, that in an even earlier approximation, the spring supports are modeled as rollers. Based on the vertical reaction forces of those rollers, the spring stiffness of the spring supports can be calculated. A beam with two fixed supports is called a fixed beam. And these beams are rarely used as static system. But one use case is when two concrete cores of a high-rise building need to be connected to make the building more rigid. These beams could be designed with concrete or steel beams. 
And also the fixed beam is statically indeterminate. As the name already says, the fixed beam has two fixed supports. The last type of beam we cover in this video is the beam with roller and fixed support. Also, this type of beam is rarely used. But one use case of the static system is a concrete beam supported on one side by an in-situ concrete core and on the other side by a concrete column. The designer could choose the fixed connection so that the structure is more rigid and robust. This type of beam has one fixed support and one roller. Now that you got introduced to several different types of beams, you can see that the structural engineer has quite a choice. Picking the right type of beam for the structure also comes with experience. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And you can also find other structural engineering guides on our homepage, structuralbasics.com. Until next time.